Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna show you how you can turn a boring snapshot like this into something like this. Alright, the first thing I'm gonna do is raise the shadows all the way so we have a lot of details in the shadows. Then I'm gonna bring down the highlights. This was shot at sunset so the sky is quite bright so that's why I'm gonna drop down the highlights. Then the whites, I'm gonna press down the ALT key on the whites and see wherever they clip. That looks good. Then the blacks, I'm gonna bring down the blacks a bit so we get a bit more contrast. Something like that works pretty well. Then overall contrast, let me see. I might even go minus contrast a bit just so we have a bit more of a softer look. Then clarity might do the same as I done with contrast. Yeah, I think that works pretty well around minus 13. Then color temperature, I'm gonna play around with that. Let's see if there's anything I like better than the current one. I think I'm gonna stick with that one actually, maybe even introduce a bit more blue originally. And then go to the split toning afterwards and add some other colors into the highlights. But for now, I'm gonna play around with the tint. Definitely gonna add some magenta. Something like that works quite good. Vibrance and saturation. I don't think I'm gonna play around with those settings too much just now. Maybe just a tiny bit of plus vibrance. Yeah. Then to the tonal curve. You know what I like to do with my highlights and the tonal curve. I like to bring them up and just exaggerate the sun right here even more than the lights overall. Let's see. I think I'm gonna reset them and leave them at zero. The darks, maybe a little bit of minus in the darks, something like that. Then to the shadows, maybe bringing them a bit down. Yeah, I think a bit minus works quite well somewhere around minus 25. The HSL tool gonna click on this little dot next to the hue go over the blues and just drag the mouse up and down and see if there's anything I like better than the original hue. In the blues there's not really anything I like better so I'm gonna do the same thing with the orange and the yellows. I think minus a bit works quite well then I'm gonna do the same with saturation. Let's see here, maybe a bit of plus saturation for the orange and yellows. And the blues, I think I'm gonna leave the blues where they were. And lastly, the luminance. I think I'm not gonna change anything on the luminance with the orange and yellows. So let's see if I wanna change anything with the blues. I think I'm gonna bring them down slightly. Yeah, something like that. Then down here at the split toning tool, I think I'm gonna change quite a lot here. Just so we get even more colors in the highlights. Let's see here what works best. I think I'm gonna introduce some orange here actually. Don't want to make this too much, otherwise it will look fake and unnatural. Something like that works pretty well. Then I'm also gonna play around with the shadows and the split toning tool. Maybe a bit of pink or even a bit warmth as well. Yeah, I think I'm gonna add some yellow orangey color in the shadows. Make sure I don't overdo that. That works pretty well for now. Alright, so let's go down to the detail tool. In terms of sharpening, you will know that I usually like to add some sharpening in most of my images. However, I kind of want to go for a softer look and feel in this sunset. So I'm actually going to go minus this time from the default, which is at 25 and go down to zero because there's really not anything I want sharpened additionally. Noise reduction, let's zoom in here one to one, see if there's any noise. There's definitely some noise, so I think I'm gonna add some noise reduction. Somewhere around 40 works pretty good. And while we're at it, let's see if there's any color noise. I can see some here under the bridge, so I think I'm gonna add some color noise reduction. 
around 50 gets rid of all of it. Alright, so I'm gonna zoom back out again, lens corrections, go to profile, enable profile corrections, choose my lens, in this case the Canon 18 to 55, go straight away to color and remove chromatic aberration. So all of the green and purple fringing will be removed from the high contrast edges. Let's zoom back out again and go to effects. I think I'm gonna add some vignetting, however I don't want to add too much right now. I'd rather do that with an adjustment brush later. I think minus 8 works great for now. Then camera calibration, just gonna play around with the profile, see if there's anything I like better than the current one. This is way over the top. This is kinda undersaturated. This doesn't look bad, but it's a bit bright in the highlights. So I think I'm gonna stick with Adobe Standard. Or am I? Let's see, camera portrait versus Adobe Standard. I actually think camera portrait works quite a bit better for this photo. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna stick with that. So you see there, it's always worth checking out every setting you can. The sliders, gonna play around with the sliders real quick. Alright, so I ended up changing some of the sliders, not too big of a difference, here's camera calibration off and here's on, main difference comes from the camera portrait change. So we're actually done with the global adjustments, now we're gonna go into local adjustments, which we're gonna do quite a lot in this picture, I think. So first thing, I'm gonna grab a graduated filter and just kinda drag it over the sky here something like that and drop the exposure a bit make sure it's not too much maybe even increase the shadows a bit so I can drop the exposure and the highlight slider a bit more and get even more detail and color out of the sky I think that looks pretty good then I'm gonna grab an adjustment brush make sure everything's reset make sure the feather is at the hundred and then I'm just gonna go to clarity and drop the clarity quite a bit and even go to noise reduction and increase that slider as well. And then I'm just gonna paint over this water and as you can see it just gets a little bit smoother. It kinda looks like you've taken this with a longer shutter speed which is really a nice look and quite a nice trick to know. I think I'm even gonna drop clarity down further and introduce noise reduction even more. Noise reduction just flattens out the image a bit. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. Here's without the adjustment brush. You can see it's very detailed and textured water, which I wasn't really going for, but unfortunately I didn't have a tripod with me, so I couldn't get a longer shutter speed. And here's after the adjustment brush with a bit of smoothening. Looks way better, distracts less from the actual scene. Then I think I'm gonna make a new adjustment brush, reset everything down here and drop the exposure a bit. Still be sure that the feather is at the 100 down here. And then I'm gonna introduce some vignetting just down here and something down there. So I'm gonna close this adjustment brush and I think I'm gonna drop down the overall exposure a bit just so we get a bit more mood of the actual sun setting. And then the next of my concerns is color. It kinda looks flat but if I were to bring up the vibrance just so much it would just look totally ugly and unnatural. So I'm not gonna do that because I'm actually happy with the blues. I just want a bit more warmth, so I'm gonna grab a radial filter here, make sure you invert the mask and the feather is at the 100, and then I'm gonna increase the temperature slider here, as well as the color slider towards a bit of an orange, and I'm just gonna create a radial filter and put it over this spot on the water right here make it a bit longer towards over here 
as you can see this is way too much so I'm gonna fix that in a second I'm gonna bring down the color temperature a bit and bring the color here a bit more towards the reds that works pretty good and I even think I'm gonna drop the color temperature a bit more then I'm gonna duplicate this filter right click duplicate and put it over this guy here maybe here I could use a bit more of orange and a bit more of warm color that works pretty well then I'm gonna create another radial filter this time a pretty big one and I'm just gonna drag it over this sky portion down here as you can see the temperature is way too much so I'm gonna reset that for now and just kinda increase the color temperature a tiny bit so we get a bit more warmth spread out of the sky I think that works quite good I'm pretty much done. Here you can see without any radial filters and here's with radial filters really adds a lot of dynamic to the photo. So let's see where we started with the entire picture. Here is the raw file. It really just looks kind of a snapshot because it was a snapshot but thanks that I shot this in raw and to a bit of editing it looks something like that. Keep in mind that this was just kind of a tutorial where I wanted to teach you how you could turn a snapshot into a decent photo. Of course, if you set up everything carefully and you make sure you haven't anything overexposed and you set your framing right and wait for the right light, you will get a much better picture after processing than this one. This was just kind of an idea giver to show you how much is possible with Lightroom and how you maybe can save one of your pictures that you thought was lost. I want to thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, give me a like. If you would like to see more editing videos and other photography videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next episode. Take care.